hey friends welcome back to my youtube channel it's been a long time i made a video in a car i was just setting up my camera and i remember and i was like when was the last time i made a video because whenever i want to make a video i usually come to this particular spot i wish i can show you guys where i am i usually come to this particular spot and i'm currently on break at work of course that's the only time i have to make a video so when i came here i was like oh it's been long i came here it's been really long yeah all right enough of all those ranting so if you're here it means you want to learn one or two things about how the canadian resume works like what are the tips what are the what are the things you should include in your resume and what you should not include and we're going to be talking about what you should and we're going to also be talking about some tips about your resume to give you a higher chance of getting at least a call back and to get hired because most times you send you send your resumes for jobs and the next thing you see is an email saying unfortunately unfortunately you know uh, uh, we're moving on with other candidates and all that so you want to make your resume optimized enough for whatever job you're applying for so before we get into it there's always this saying that you should always have a different CV for different jobs. Like you cannot keep using one CV um, for 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 different jobs, especially when you're applying for different roles entirely. If you're applying for the same role for different organizations, it's understandable. But when you're applying for, for example, you want to be a cashier here, and secondly, the other one you want to be a customer care representative, the other one you want to be a financial advisor, you cannot use one CV. So if you're a job seeker and you have just one CV, then there's something wrong somewhere especially if you're not specifically looking for a particular job even if you are even looking for a particular job the descriptions the job descriptions are written in the vacancy are mostly different so you want to make sure that you have a cv for a particular job it can be very tiring especially when you're looking for a job when you have to apply for more than like 10 15 jobs in a day then you're, you're i'm telling you to now make your series to align to each job but you need to put in the work if you want to get a call back if you want to get a job you know people are even doing all those and they're still not getting call back not to talk of when you so there is a system they call the ats ats is um applicant tracking system yes that is what recruiters use to filter all the resumes that they receive for a particular job they use it to filter it first before they now go into it one by one so all those automated emails you get and all that it may just be from an automated system you know so what it does it looks for it looks at all the the, the cvs submitted for a particular job and filters it based on keywords keywords that they have assigned to it like okay you want to apply for a role of a customer care then they may have keywords like okay you are competent you're a good listener you are organized you are this so if you have all those things in your cv the ats system picks your cv among the ones that are eligible for that job so if it goes to a cv that the person says maybe a cashier you put that you put that i um, have experience in 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 handling in handling cash and all that it will not pick your cv because all those keywords are not there so that is why you have to look at the job you're applying for first of all and then look at the keywords in the job description and find a way to input it in your own cv not that you copy word for word but make sure those keywords appear in your own cv so that you won't stand a chance of being selected by the system first before the humans now go in to now give calls to you for interviews and all that that's a very very important tip that most people do not know and some people even know and they still go ahead to not um, apply it in their job set also when you're going to all these search engines like for example let's use indeed indeed is the common one is the one i use most times you see different jobs and then you do quick what they call it quick apply yeah it's i think it's quick apply i'll i'll put a screenshot of it so yeah, i'll put it on the screen somewhere so you see different jobs and then you you click on quick apply so you already have your cv in the indeed platform and then you just go to quick apply and then it just automatically shows you the cv that is uploaded and then you answer just one or two questions and then it submits your application if you are doing like that then it means you're not really ready to get a job because 
it means number one you are using the same cv for all those jobs if you are doing quick apply so you can only at a sitting like within 10 minutes apply for five jobs using quick apply yes you can because you just click on the job it gives you the option to quick apply you click on it you your cv appears the cv on your platform on the platform appears and then you just submit that is the same way you receive rejection emails that shows unfortunately unfortunately people that have done that i have done that before too that is what i'm talking from my experience and you guys will also know that the same way you submit all those job applications is mostly the same way you receive all those rejection emails that unfortunately unfortunately but if you sit down give yourself time that okay i want to apply for five jobs today you open each job look at the job description look at your cv and then try to put the keywords try to what they are looking for try to put it in your cv that yes if they're looking for a make them find a they're they looking for somebody that has done customer care representative they need like two years experience if you have the two years experience don't hide it put it there that you have two years experience if they are asking for a qualification like you need to have cifc to be able to do this job and if you have the cifc qualification put it there if it is pending put it there and put in view pending registered you know awaiting license put it there so that the system will even pick up your cv first of all and when the humans are now looking at it to know if they should call you for interview they will actually see that okay you have this qualification but it is pending then they'll look at it how how long is it pending like okay if this person has registered it may just take one or two weeks to complete the license or this person has registered or this person has already started the diploma course it gives you more chance than if you don't put it there you know that's a very very good tip so sit down for each job you want to apply for it can be time consuming i know it's not easy but for the fact that you are looking for a job then you need to put in the efforts to apply for that job so coming so let's go into the how the canadian cv looks like so first of all it is done in a chronological order like in a reverse chronological order meaning your most recent job experience and position should be the one to appear first on your cv so coming from like let's say i, I came from nigeria most of my people here are nigerians of course i'm going to be talking about nigeria our cv is entirely different from how the canadian cv is so if you have that cv please just don't even try to because for the profile i remember the profile you have your name your states your local government your gender sometimes even your local government your address your streets your you just put everything about your life on your cv in such a way that for the recruiter may even from all those information self just throw your cv to those men because the person may even have a bias about people that come from kogi state or people that come from your state and you already you already put everything there <laughs> out you know so for the canadian cv first of all it's it's okay let's even go into the profile like the most important contact details you put on a canadian cv is your first name your last name your phone number your email and your address the address we're not talking about like your home address if you are in staying in winnipeg manitoba you put winnipeg manitoba if you are living in calgary calgary alberta you know that is going to be your address then you put your linkedin your linkedin url that's your link linkedin link where if they click on it they go into your linkedin but before you do that make sure your your linkedin is aligned with the job you're applying for so if you're applying for a role in like in bank or something then your your job experiences in your linkedin should show you have those experiences or what you listed on your cv should appear in your linkedin that is why you shouldn't use the same cv for all those jobs not saying you should lie you know but if you're going to apply for a job that you have not done before fine you can leave it on your cv on your um linkedin profile that way but on your cv you shouldn't show like you have done that kind of job before with me on your linkedin is not there you know 
you could just put in skills that shows that you you can do this job but not showing that you have done it because they are going to go into your linkedin in fact without even putting your linkedin profile you they will even if they are serious about it they will they will go into your linkedin to even check what your job experience is most people you can attest to it that once you start applying for jobs, the next thing you start seeing people viewing your profile from that organization or from related organizations. You just see people viewing your CV. You know, people are checking you out, you know. So that those are the major th information about you. Your first name, your last name, phone number, email, and your address, then your um, LinkedIn profile. So secondly, if you're going to be talking about your... Um, the, the resume summary like a summary of the resume so that shows it gives an like like a kind of it gives like a kind of summary about you about your career about your accomplishment so you can say okay um um you have maybe like five years work experience in so so and so field with so so and so accomplishment just a paragraph about you to open up the resume you know just like maybe five lines four lines to show a summary about you so that from a glance they will know that okay this person has work experience in so so and so few for so so and so years and this is what she has accomplished just a brief summary about you so it is called the resume summary then talking about the the reverse chronological order of your work experience is from the recent one you have done that should be the one first then the other ones Will, will follow up so if it's in a situation whereby you've done 10 jobs please don't put all those 10 jobs put the re most, ex most relevant ones to the job you're applying for because in the first place your cv shouldn't even be more than one one page it shouldn't be more than one page especially if you're just starting up but if you've stayed long in the you, you have a career you've been working for years you know you put all those because all those things are relevant you've grown a lot in your your career so you can put you can have two max three but you that are just starting your cv is three pages what happened which what what how you know <laughs> put the most relevant ones and if you must put all the jobs you've done because you feel it aligns to the job you're applying for then you are going to reduce all those job descriptions under the jobs you reduce them to just just summarize them you know because they're all similar you summarize them you now go into the um the listing of the job experiences that you've done and as i said it's in chronological order starting from the most recent current one you're doing or the last job you have done should be the one there with the dates the start date the end date and then you put the um the role your position and then your roles and responsibilities in the job so those roles and responsibilities should be minimized in such a way that you show more of accomplishments in that job you are showing the roles that you are meant to do you should also show how you have accomplished all those goals you know for example they say as a financial advisor you're supposed to um, meet customers advise them on their financial needs and goals help them to meet their financial goals and all that then you you're showing all those things like what you do all the calls you make to them how you help them when they come in for appointment and all that but you are supposed to show accomplishment like okay within the first quarter of the of my role i was able to accomplish so and so figures you know find a way to put it there in your in your roles and responsibilities not just showing just the roles you know so <clears throat> Fourthly, you want to go into your skills. So, the skills have to do with the particular job based on the job, based on the, um, based on the job, the vacancy you see and uh, the skills that they need. It's going to be listed in the job. So, you put it there as your skills. Skills, some people put skills and accomplishments. Some could just be skills. So, you could put um organized you are a um good listener customer relationship and all that you put it as your skills there some people could also use that same place to put their accomplishment but for me i had just my skills there so the skills you could also use ai 
to help you to do your skills so now i'm going to be talking about ai here i'm going to chip in ai here i studied so i read something that says use ai to optimize your cv but make it presentable to a human remember these people are going to be looking at thousands of cvs from different people that are going to be using ai and those cvs have a way of looking similar if they trust me they know when ai was the one that helped you do your cv you could use it. nobody's saying you shouldn't use it but like when you want to do your skills now you look for what skills are relevant to this job i want to apply for what skills are relevant to a customer care representative what skills are relevant to a financial advisor what skills are relevant to a caregiver in a, in a home in a nursing home it's going to list it out then you use your own your own mind your own head to 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 change the words or something but it's still giving the same thing not just copying and pasting everything because you see hundreds of people are going to copy the same um skills ai gave you everything is going to look similar you could prepare your cv prepare your cover letter and download it copy it and paste it on chat gpt on any ai tool you're using and tell it to and tell it to rewrite rewrite cv rewrite cover letter it's going to use your words but rewrite it so there's no how it's going to be similar with the other person you know because you are changing your own words but if you go direct to the ai tool and say you should create a cv for <clears throat> for customer care role trust me it's going to be similar to other people so in this example i'm talking about when you need to put your skills in your cv you 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 look for skills relevant to the particular role and then you bring it out and change the words rewrite it on your cv so it could be you first do it on the cv put it on ai to help you rewrite or the other way around but you shouldn't do direct copy and paste because most of most people go direct to i'm using chat gpt now because that's the one most people use they just go directly it tells you what to do and then you download it on your cv no it's not even, the the ats is not even going to pick your cv in that in that instance you know so after doing the skills then you're going to now talk about your certifications that you've gotten your licensing your awards degrees that you've gotten you put it there at the as the fifth um section of your cv so if you have a license you've done and you really find relevant to the job you're going to put it there awards you've received any <clears throat> any um even if you've not accomplished the license like before um getting my own um cifc license i put it there that it's ongoing like it's it's exam has been written but the the license is ongoing because from you writing an examination for a particular license is not automatic you get the license after getting the results passing the examination you now apply it may take maybe one month two months depending on the licensing you're looking for so you could put it as ongoing it's automatically tell them that okay this person has written the exam and she's already in process of getting the license you know so you put all those your degrees first degree second degree me i would just advise you put your highest qualification like if you have masters there's no point in putting the first degree you put the master except if that first degree is the is the is the degree that matches the role you're applying for because some people do first degrees in different roles in different um courses and their masters in another one but the job you're applying for may be re your first degree may be the one relevant to if for example you studied um economics or you write if you study banking and financing as first degree second degree you came you went to do um something else not relevant to it and then you want to apply for a job role of like a banker or a financial advisor is that first degree that is relevant you put it there so that is where you can put it but if it is not relevant then better just put the highest qualification you have you know and down here in canada mostly certifications are the ones that really sells more like licensing and certification but if you don't have it you put your degrees that you've accomplished back home so as i said your cv should be minimized to one page except if you have you have 
like stayed long in that career you've built a lot for yourself and they're all relevant you can put it in your cv people are applying for like senior positions you know directors and all that yes you, your cv has to be rich nobody expected to be on one page but if you're just starting up you're a new immigrant please minimize it to one page and remove all those irrelevant things that we have in the um nigerian cv or where you're coming from back home so i'm just going to summarize the the tips i gave earlier i'm just going to summarize them first of all make your cv align with the job role you're applying for each job should be each cv should be aligned to if you should take time to apply for a particular job minimize the use of quick apply on all those job um job um, banks like indeed for example try to take time to apply for a particular job you know don't just submit cv submit submit so let me sit you can submit up to 10. check for spelling mistakes punctuation spelling mistakes you're trying to impress the recruiter you're not trying to stress them to understand what you're saying in your cv you know give your cv to people to proofread or you can use some some softwares to proofread you finish the cv you upload it for proofreading you'll be shocked to see errors that will come out so that's spelling mistakes so maybe your english is british and you're not or you're not using standard english or something to give options for you to choose the to change the words you have used in your cv very very important because that is already a turn off in the first place like you're trying to apply for something and then your cv has is full of so much grammar and all grammatical errors and all that so you want to watch out for that um also you should optimize your cv for the eight years as the applicant tracking system whereby you select cv is a software that recruiters use to filter all the cvs they got in the first place they use it to filter before they now take over to now send um invites to you so they those software search for keywords so keywords relevant to the job that they they they, 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 they they advertise for if your cv doesn't have those keywords it's just going to remove your cv from the from the eligible ones and then you get the automated email that um uh, um unfortunately or oh, we're moving ahead with other candidate or oh, at this time we're moving ahead with all those english that you get you want to reduce the chances of all that happening then um show more of accomplishments in your cvs than than roles and, and responsibilities you know show what you've accomplished in your previous jobs you are not going to say you're not going to put roles and responsibilities no you will put roles and responsibilities but it should be more of accomplishments in the cv so i do get a lot of um emails from people asking for canadian cv canadian format and all that so i'm going to have my email in the in my description my email is always there for anyone that wants to do his cv i will request you to first of all upload whatever cv you have if it's relevant to the job you're looking for you upload it so that i'll pick the relevant information i need like maybe your previous jobs your contact and all that i'm going to pick it from the old cvs and then i'll make your cv to be in the canadian style i'm going to give you the both the word document and then the pdf the word document is for you to already have the standard canadian cv and then you can tweak it the way you want so you don't because if you have the pdf version only you cannot do anything with it you know you just for a particular job but if you have the word document you can always sit down edit it and all that as far as it is already in the template the canadian template canadian format you understand so i'm going to be doing that and it's just going to cost a token of course it's not gonna be free <laughs> it's just going to be a token i know other people that request for much higher amounts from um from people to make their series for them but if you're interested if it's something you're interested in then you send me an email my email is always in the description box and the subject should just be canadian cv format with your name and then you attach your own current resume if you want it to be converted to the canadian resume format I hope this has helped you in one way or the other if it has then please share this video with anybody that you know would need this and i'll urge you to make more research don't just sit with what i say i'm prone to mistakes and i don't know everything so whatever you hear 
try to make more research to build on what the person has said or to remove any errors the person must have made the purpose of this video is just to educate you but you can educate yourself even more with making more research as i always say i'm not an immigration expert i am not a recruiter i am not a hr person but i'm just here to always help my people you know help you to achieve your goals and but sometimes some of those services come with um, <clears throat> some tokens which you know it's worth it because you're going to be using it going forward you know you'll be using the series going forward all right i've talked enough thank you so much and do have a nice day and all the best in your job searches bye